It is February 18th up here on the Prairie Orchard in uh, southwest uh, Michigan. And this is a pretty unusual day. It is about 60 degrees in what is supposed to be the coldest month of the year. Uh, beautiful skies, lovely weather, um, worth going out and enjoying, but a little disturbing that it's so warm and uh, it's anticipated this weather will stay with us for at least a few more days. Sasha and I are out enjoying um, the prairie and also some of our fruit trees. Uh, here's that Jefferson plum we planted a few uh, years ago and it is already somewhere between 15 and 20 feet tall. Uh, maybe a little bigger than we want it and we'll have to uh, trim it back. It's got some really beautiful buds coming out on it and may actually do some flowering this year. Uh, the first time it'll do some significant flowering, a little bit last year, but looks like the whole tree is going to light up. Here you can see some of the um, buds again in mid-February and these are gonna, probably going to grow quite a bit between now and uh, I'm going to guess April and May when they are flowering. Uh, beautiful little buds. While we're on the topic of plums, we're also seeing these blossoms forming here on our wild goose plum. Uh, this actually flowered pretty well last year, but no fruit off of it. I'm hoping that this year, uh, since uh, we're about to get maybe our first bloom from our Doulin pear, that maybe um, there'll be some cross fertilization and, and potentially some plum formation, but uh, beautiful little uh, budlets forming here and again it's still uh, just February. Up on this tree as we saw in some of the previous videos we have some egg sacs. This is an egg sac for um, praying mantis and there's at least a couple of these egg sacs on this single tree. Um, the prairie just serves as a wonderful habitat for those carnivorous insects. Next to it here is our Doulin pear and uh, we're seeing some formation of buds which suggests we may actually have some blooms this year. Again, if we do, then this tree uh, could fertilize that tree right there, and then hopefully that tree would fertilize this tree. Uh, that would be outstanding to have our first crop of plums this year. There is one other plum on our property that's worth uh, showing, um, and it's this one right here. It's very short. It's probably about three and a half feet tall. Um, it's taken a little while to get settled, um, and I'm hoping that it grows quite a bit this coming year. Um, this is an old green gauge uh, plum, which is a treasured plum from England. There are a lot of green gauge plums out on the market, um, but you have to work a little bit to find one which represents the original sort of green gauge, old green gauge plum that uh, the British are very um, very uh, sort of attached to. Um, and I was able to find one of those. Uh, it took me a while. I planted it here. I really do hope that this uh, does some significant growth this year and actually uh, develops well over the next couple years uh, so that we could have one of those uh, treasured plums um, here on our property. The old green gauge plum. A stop by our pear orchard finds our pears getting uh, ready to develop their buds. Um, this is that um, unknown pear uh, that has these really intriguing looking spurs here where it's been uh, fruiting in the past. Uh, pear trees really just have this very primitive but aesthetically very pleasing appearance. Um, they have like scale, they have interesting browns with smooth patches. Uh, again, they have these spurs and buds which take all kinds of shapes and almost look um, alien. This one here is our white doyen uh, pear tree which has been so prolific over the past few years and again you see that really beautiful looking primitive look with um, sort of like a sense of fertility you know arising from these, these different spurs that take on all kinds of shapes with fullness and interesting scales and stripes below them. 
I'm not sure this is going to have as much fruit this year as last year. It usually has a heavy fruiting year and then a quieter year. So this is uh, scheduled to be its quieter year. Here in the apple orchard, it looks like we're setting up for another good year of blooms as well. This is our um, Cavio Blanc Diver. Um, and we have our spurs um, here starting to form some early uh, fruit buds. And uh, the rest of the trees seem to be doing well. Some of the trees that were planted later are coming of age. Here is our uh, Roxbury Russet which is thought to be the first variety native to uh, the United States, planted by the early colonists as a seed, recognized as a tasty fruit, and then uh, sort of passed down through the generations. Last year we had a single bloom on this tree, um, but no fruit. We'll see if we get more blooms this year and if we have a partner tree to pollinate it effectively. I believe this was where the bloom was last year, but no uh, fruit set. Roxbury Russet. Here we have pitmast and pineapple, which uh, hasn't yet flowered, but uh, this tree is very vigorous. It planted, planted just a few years ago. This has grown to over 10 feet despite um, my attempts at pruning it down to size. Um, I guess in looking at the branches, I'm hoping to see some fruit buds. I don't see any obvious fruit buds yet. But hopefully in the next couple of years we'll actually have those fruit buds come on. And again we have uh, an egg sack here for praying mantis there and there's another one up higher in the tree. It looks like a dried leaf but these are um, an egg sack for you know hundreds of little praying mantises that will come out this year. So pitmast and pineapple. One final tree to talk about today this is our uh, Cox Orange Pippin, which has been slow to grow, but it's gotten a little more vigorous in its growth over the past two years. So I'm hoping it's just uh, gaining momentum. I don't see any obvious fruit buds here on this tree uh, yet, but I look forward to it. This is one of England's most treasured apples, the Cox Orange Pippin, and the parent to many varieties that are eaten commercially today. Um, so it was uh, a great variety in terms of a source of genetics for the modern um, gourmet apple.